This video was proudly sponsored by Aplique. In this video, I'm redesigning a popular streetwear t-shirt from the brand Represent. You've probably seen this design floating around the internet, so today I'm attempting to redesign it using stock images and a little bit of Photoshop magic. Part one, finding images. I have the original Represent design imported into Photoshop already, and now it was time to scour the internet looking for the best great white photo I can find. Unfortunately, sites like Unsplash and Pexels didn't really pan out for me. I ended up just using Google images since I'm not going to be printing this and making profit off of it strictly for educational purposes and fun. So yeah, you guys have to do your own research on copyright, but um, that's the reason for me using those images. And I needed a background element, so I typed in Eye of the Storm, and I thought this spiral storm would look pretty cool as a background element and kind of represent water. I just copied and pasted them into my document in Photoshop, and that's pretty much it. Part two finding fonts. For the font, I really wanted to get semi close to the original design. So I went to dafont.com, typed in represent so I can see what these fonts will look like. There were two fonts that stood out to me that looked very similar. One was called Oxide and the second one was called Poggers. And you guys can search for those on dafont.com and find them instantly. So yeah, I got those downloaded, installed, and they're ready to go. Part three, compositing. Compositing is where we take all of the images that we just found and bring them into Photoshop and start blending them together. As you can see, I'm lowering the opacity of the shark layer that way I can see under it and kind of position the storm where I want it I do have a reference layer set up so I can always toggle that on and off and see exactly what the original looks like so I can kind of sort of match it right I'm not trying to copy it exactly as long as I can capture the overall aesthetic it's going to look very similar and again I don't really care if it looks the same but I don't want it to look completely different the key to compositing is using a layer mask on each layer that you're trying to blend. Now, as far as the shark layer goes, I have a layer mask applied and I'm painting with a soft round brush. And that's simply because I want the pixels to be able to blend together. And if I used a hard round brush or like, let's say the pencil tool, it just wouldn't look the same. If you look at the water at the bottom of the shark photo, you can see that it's starting to blend into our storm a little bit, minus color. Now that's a whole different thing we're gonna get into in a second. You can blend colors several different ways but one of the ways that I like to do it is using a color balance adjustment layer and I usually just clip this to the layer that I'm trying to color balance if you add a hue and saturation layer above everything and just lower the saturation you can actually see if the exposure matches and this is a good way to also gauge uh, color because exposure does affect color uh, saturation and tonal range and all that good stuff so you definitely want to make sure the exposures match and that's a sort of hack for you guys and this is one I use every single time I'm compositing images that way I can blend colors and exposure at the same time and it's just such an easy way to work and if you're a photo editor or a filmmaker that does color grading you definitely know exactly what I'm saying here once that hue and saturation layer is set to 0% saturation I can then mess with the brightness and contrast of individual layers that way I can blend them together and this in this case, I'm focusing more on the great white shark. As you can see, I needed to brighten it up just a little bit to match the overall exposure of the storm. And I wanted to show you guys that not everything works out. My background image, I just wasn't in love with it. So I ended up finding another one and just doing the same exact process I just went over, just blending it, making sure everything looks cohesive before adding all my effects. So yeah, this new storm, I just liked it a lot more. And um, what I ended up doing was going back to Google, typing in eye of the storm again, and just kind of filtering through all the images until I found this one. If you're looking to start a streetwear brand, but maybe you're a little low on funds, Aplique is your answer. They're a convenient print on demand service that integrates seamlessly with your favorite e-commerce platforms such as Shopify. Simply add their app to your e-commerce store, choose the products you would like to customize, add your designs, and then that is pretty much it. Additionally, they offer private labeling and no monthly fees. Truly a great service and you don't wanna miss out on it. You can get started by signing up using the link in the description below. This is part four and now we're adding the final touches to our design and I'm working with individual layers. So I'm starting off with the storm and adding my typical stamp and grain layers that you guys see me do in pretty much all of my designs. I won't go over it in this video, but basically I use the stamp effect to separate my different colors. And if you guys really wanna watch that video, I will link it at the end of this video so you guys can go check that out. I always add a black background to my layers that I'm going to apply my filter gallery effects to. So that's one thing to note. And then I just take my magic wand with contiguous unchecked, and then I just select the black and press delete on my keyboard. And I do this for every single layer. And remember, each layer has a different 
intensity of stamp applied using the light and darkness uh, balance slider. And again, to reiterate, I do this for every single layer that I want to um, add a different color to. So each layer is going to have a different intensity of stamp applied. And that's how I get the look that you guys see in a lot of my artwork. But I don't always use this, but it is definitely something that I use often. And it's a really cool look nonetheless. So definitely try it out. Again, that end screen will have the video going over this in more depth. But uh, basically at this point, I'm playing with the colors making sure that they look the way I want them to look, obviously. And another cool trick that you can try is once you're done with all of your layers, you applied all the effects and the colors and stuff, you can then group all of those layers and then add the original photo on top and change the blend mode to multiply and even clip it. And that's how you can get the original colors of the shark back. So if you're looking to keep the original colors of the original image, then you just wanna basically add it above everything, change the blend mode to either multiply or color. Color also works really well if you don't want to affect things like shadows. And then you can even try adding saturation to your original image. That way it intensifies the color a little bit more. If you guys want a breakdown of this in greater detail, you definitely have to check out my merch design course coming out this April. I linked it in the description below, but basically it's going to cover over 15 hours of merch design skills that you need to design stuff like this. And um, yeah, it's, it's going to be an amazing course. I have a buddy working on it with me, so you guys can expect it, like I said, end of April. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I did for this, minus some layer masks. As you can see, I'm masking out colors in certain areas. And for the text, I ended up using the pen tool to create that sort of wave shape that they have on the original design. The nice thing is once you create that path, you could just type on it with the type tool. The pen tool is super powerful. If you didn't know that already, you can literally create any shape and type on it. I believe the only other thing that I had to do was add a slight skew to the text once I was done with the sizing and everything like that. And then obviously finishing touches like textures, but uh, it was super easy to do all that. Obviously we do it in every single video. So it was kind of like rinse and repeat. And um, you know, I was missing some of the text at the bottom as well. So I ended up finding a stencil font at the very end and then just adding it to the bottom. But yeah, nonetheless, this is how I did it guys. And there's really no secret to this stuff once you do it, once and practice it every single day, it becomes like second nature to you. If there's one piece of advice I can give you guys and leave you with today, that would probably be just be patient and practice every single day. At the end of the day, this is a skill and skills take time to get good at. So definitely don't rush it and um, don't get mad at yourself if you can't figure something out because you might wake up tomorrow and have this crazy breakthrough where you learn the thing that you were trying to learn this whole time. Here is the final represent redesign next to the original. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'm Charlie with Merch Design Academy. I will see you guys in the next one.